I think 1485 was a long time in the making. You had um, the War of the Roses, which had been going on decades between uh, the houses of Lancaster and York. That had been, like I say, going on for sort of 30 years or so. And, and that all came to a head in 1485 under the uh, context of Richard III assuming the crown in 1483 and everything that went with that in terms of uh, Edward and Richard, the princes in, in the tower. And whilst all this was going on, um, you had Henry VII, who at the time was Earl of Richmond, exiled overseas. He'd, he'd been there for uh, over a decade and he'd quietly and, and unsumedly uh, gathered, gathered his troops together and set sail, uh, arriving in the remote Pembrokeshire uh, coast in Wales. Uh, on the 7th of August 1485 and I was uh, lucky enough on a trip to the Welsh Marshes to go to the lovely uh, Shrews Shrewsbury, uh, Shrewsbury, Shrewsbury. Um, and there I saw Henry Tudor House which is where Henry Tudor is, is meant to have stayed en route to uh, the infamous Battle of Bosworth and I can only imagine what was going through his head in the days leading up uh, to that infamous battle, which then happened to occur on the 27th, 22nd of August, like I say, in Bosworth, Leicestershire. Um, uh, Richard had far superior troops. He was the, the reigning monarch, um, but as we know, it was Henry VII who emerged victorious. Uh, the, the big turning port, point was Lord Stanley, um, who had originally been there to fight alongside Richard, but uh, decided to to intervene on behalf of Henry Tudor and along with his five thousand troops, he arguably um, sent the sent the battle in Henry Tudor's favour, and Richard the Third was consequently struck down the the last ever English monarch to be killed in battle, um, and he was uh, then unceremoniously. Uh, dumped in a shallow grave and, and actually uh, it all came sort of full, full circle in 2013 when the remains of Richard III were uncovered under a car park in Leicester um, and he was reinterred at Leicester Cathedral and um, what I think is interesting about the year 1485 and I know I'm, I'm biased because it's um, you know I, I'm very much interested in the Tudor period uh, more so than the Plantagenets, but when somebody says 1485 to me, I instinctively think as that being the birth of the, the great Tudor dynasty, when in fact the, the Plantagenets um, had had ruled England for uh, hundreds and hundreds of years. They'd, they'd been uh, around for 331 years uh, precisely, uh, from 1154 to 1485. Plantagenets lasted almost three times as long as the Tudors, yet to me 1485 uh, signifies the, the birth of a dynasty um, that brought about um, so many momentous events um, that, that changed the course of, of English history. Um, and whilst Henry had secured the crown uh, for the fledgling, fledgling Tudor dynasty, um, it wasn't without its problems. He had a very tenuous uh, claim to the throne and there's a really good um, paragraph or so in Thomas Penn's Winter King uh, where it says upon Henry's coronation in Triumph and Glory at Westminster Abbey, uh, on the 30th of October 1485 that Lady Margaret reunited with the son that she had not seen for 14 years wept marvellously her tears suggested not joy but apprehension with a precarious claim to the throne no large family clan and little hereditary land of his own virtually no experience of government and heavily reliant on the doubtful allegiances of a group of Yorkists whose loyalties lay with the princes he now courted there was little to suggest that Henry's reign would last long or that civil conflict would not simply mutate again in next week's vlog we'll look ahead to 1486 and the first full year of Henry VII's near quarter of a century reign and the first full year of the Tudor dynasty.